Hello, my name is Gerald from Lancaster Parts. Uh, it's nice to have you join us. I have a 6000 series chopper, 50 series, and I would like to demonstrate a little bit how to calibrate the uh, sharpening stone in case if it's not sharpening all the way to the left or the right. Um, so basically, I'm just going to have you follow along with me as I go into the cab, give a little bit of instructional of how to go into the channel and um, then come down and you can do some further um, adjustment at these screws as it's working its way back and forth. So it's, it's a kind of a time consuming process. You don't want to do it when you're um, trying to get out in the field and start doing your, your chopping. You want to do it obviously on a day that you have a little bit of time. It takes roughly uh, 20 minutes to half an hour if you're going to make adjustments that are um, you know accurate. Maybe before you already get started, you're going to, uh, which I already have out here, is the, of course, the top shield. All the um, cutter head shields are out. Um, I took some time before we started um, taping this to just clean up all this area, make sure everything is free. What I basically do is take a, uh, the manual rod, stick it into your side here on the right-hand side, and you can try to, you know, Basically, just to make sure that thing is free and, and moving, that when it goes to start adjusting, that you can do all that. Um, we can get into that a little bit further. I'll cover that a little bit further detail a little bit later. So with that, we're going to go up to the cab. I'm going to show you how to go into the programming feature, and then we'll, we'll come back down and we'll, we'll follow along with that. So in the cab, you're going to push the uh, on-off power switch. And while you're holding that down, you turn your ignition key on to the first position. Uh, first position is sufficient. If you go to the second position, you're going to have um, lights and other functions of the harvester start. So first position, as you're holding that, you move down. You can select the second pad, the one right beneath it. And while you're holding it down, you move. look at your monitor on your right-hand side on the lower column your InfoTrack monitor. Um, as you can see, this display here is not showing what I'm looking for. You can push the cutter head function. It gives you a number, a uh, numerical number between one through six. And I'm already on channel five, which is what I want. But you, you change your channels, and we want to go between channel four and five. And you do that by turning the left-hand knob directly below the pad that I'm holding up here on my overhead console. As you can see that right now, as I'm turning the knob, just like a radio knob, I can turn that and I can move between different channels. But I want to go starting with channel number five. As you come to that, you then you move over to the right hand button and you push the far lower right. And that will give you the selection of that channel that you want to be in. Now, as you can see here, I am running into a problem. It's giving me a 178 error code. If my memory serves me right, I believe that's telling me that my sharpening stone is not in the home position. So, uh, picking up again where we left off, went down, checked the uh, um, sharpening stone, and it was still not moved up into the full home position. Since the error code is coming up as 178E, denoting that my sharpening stone is not in the home position. I can turn the, I'm going to have to abort the uh, program sequence at this point, turn the key off, we'll, we'll uh, stop it, and then turn it back on again. Um, I would say go to the second position, and you can push the manual button and your uh, sharpening button, and as you hold them together, it will force your sharpening stone motor to move your stone back up to the home position. We'll see if that takes care of the problem by um, going back down there and checking that simultaneously. Again, just push them together. We'll force your sharpening stone back to the home position and it will um, therefore go ahead and push the, uh, the stop end switch. So after you made your adjustment that you want to, you come up here and you can actually um, you hold down your button again, and you turn your your number over to channel number six, which is displayed on your right InfoTrack monitor, and then you push your right-hand lower button, and that will select it 
that that's a saved function. You can also just do it by turning the key off and then going through that function again too. So now we move from that one, we're gonna go again to channel number five. I'm gonna go back up here again, hold the left hand button, move to channel number five, watching my monitor, selecting that. And it's going to display a channel 177. Okay, and we'll move back down again. As I mentioned before, if you're getting a 178E error code, which is telling you that your sharpening stone is not at the home position because either your rod isn't adjusted properly or whatever the malfunction might be, you can force it home sometimes by pushing um, the manual button and the sharpening button simultaneously. Sometimes that will allow it to force it home when you just, not in programming mode, but just simply forcing it back to home. Sometimes, as in this case, that doesn't always work. Um, what I'm going to show you is um, a way to force this stone back to the home position, and it needs to happen. It's also not a bad idea, especially in this case, if it's that far out of adjustment, to just simply remove the rod that holds your uh, your cylinder rod to your sharpening stone. So we're just going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay. As you can see, oftentimes things do not go as planned. And this one in particular is binding somewhere in here and uh, prohibiting it from to continue to keep going in its adjustments. So I removed the pin. We're going to let that free float, which actually works out just fine. We can come back later and hook it up once we feel comfortable in that. But after I remove the pin, you still need to force the sharpening stone back to the home position. There is a end stop switch right up here in the very top underneath that is looking to be depressed in other words to uh, give it a clearance that the stone is in fact at home position i'm going to thread my sharpening stone uh, rod the manual rod into the right hand side and physically pull that sharpening stone back And then I want to, um, after I'm back at that position, probably best practice would be to remove that rod again. And physically turn that motor up a couple turns so you know that that button is definitely indeed depressed. All right, so just to bring you up to speed, after I removed the pin, I brought the sharpening stone over, gave it a couple of turns to make sure my stone is moved up into the end stop switch, and as and then went back into the cab, re-entered the program, and again went to channel number five, which does your your far right hand sweep and your rod's at your shortest length. So it's always the opposite. If your rod's shortest, your 
Uh, serving stone be at your far right, at your fullest extension, um, your cylinder, your serving stone will be over to your far left. Okay, so as you can see, it's turning to and fro. That's how it's doing as it's in the sharpening sequence, which it will display channel 176 when you're doing the channel four. Um, it's telling you that you're doing the far left side of the stone. I want to go and adjust the sweep, and the way I'm going to do that is remove these screws right here. Right behind them is an adjustment pot. It's a little bit confusing, but the lower access hole is going to adjust channel number four all the way to your right. Your upper one is channel number five. That's going to adjust it when your rod is all the way extended. Therefore, your sharpening stone will be all the way over to the left. Channel four lower, channel five upper. I take a two millimeter um, Allen key and just gently go in there and insert it. And I would suggest making maybe at the most quarter turns at a time and you give it some time for that motor to catch up with the uh, adjustment going back to the relay board and back and forth. So as I turn it, it will adjust that. And you can watch that. I will adjust both ways to kind of watch. And what we want to do is achieve this cylinder at the, at the most retracted state. You can see there is it's going that as I'm turning to the right, I'm turning clockwise so that my rod is actually coming out further. Um, in this case here, I think I'm going to actually, in which you can do this, you can turn your rod um, and actually lengthen or shorten the stroke of it that way. So maybe I'll make one turn and see if I can get that down into where I want to be at. See how that's going to start moving back now. Okay, I believe we got pretty close. As you can see, the rod is retracting um, pretty much all its full travel. And my sharpening stone is manually moved over about as far as I can go. And therefore my pins are basically lined up. So we'll stop where we're at there. I'm going to go up and select that channel and then go and move to channel number four, which will do the, um, the rod. It's gonna move all the way out. It's gonna take our sharpening stone all the way over to the left. What can be a little bit confusing is after you have it adjusted, um, you can shut your key off. I hooked up my pin, but you do need to force that thing to go back to home. What I mean by forcing it, you have to hit your manual switch and your sharpening switch simultaneously when you have your key turned on, which will therefore retract your cylinder back all the way and turn your sharpening stone up into that home position to that button I mentioned earlier. That needs to happen so it has, again, its starting position. So have that done now. 
going to go back up in the cab. I'm going to start the sharpen sequence again and just see where the stone is physically landing at after I had this rod adjusted. Because that is my starting position, just checking the stone at the far right um, position. So what you want to look for is how far is that stone traveling over. You want it to try and reach a little bit past, about a quarter inch past the knives is ideal if you can do it. I'm going to just try making a little bit of fine adjustment. I'm not certain it's going to work. I believe that's as far as I can go with this machine right there because it is nearly contacting here to bracket as well. So I'm going to um, now move up the cab, save that position, and then go to the um, channel 5, which will check my right-hand side. Just by the way the motor is making it sound, I believe it is um, stressing it to some extent. It's moving it too far to the left hand side. So I'm going to go back into the upper um, adjustment again. And I'm just going to turn it clockwise about a quarter of a turn to uh, keep it from going quite that far. I believe that's about as close as it'll get. So after that, again, I'll go back up to the cab, push the lower left hand button, turn the knob to channel six, and then the lower right hand button to select um, my address that I have chosen or, or calibration. That should end it. Um, the stone should move back to the home position. And after it's complete, you can turn it off and it'll save its settings. So I believe that completes the adjustment uh, sequence. And uh, obviously after that, you're going to want to try sharpening which I would explain in another video. So thank you for joining us today. Hope that clears up some confusion that you may have. If you have further questions, um, feel free to contact us and we'll try to steer you some further direction. Thank you.